Have you ever wondered if God really speaks to us? We're going to talk about that today. Last week, we started a new series called Stranger Stories. Sometimes in the uh, church, we tend to avoid some of these stories in the Bible, but, but the truth is that I know that you think that there's some stuff in the Bible that is kind of weird, and really, there is. And it doesn't help us to avoid these stories because some of the stranger stories in the Bible teach us some of the greatest things about God. So this week, we're going to talk about truly one of the weirdest stories in all of the scriptures. Uh, um, a lot of us have this question about the Christian faith. When we're new to it, or to it, or even if we're not so new to it, and the question is this, does God really speak to us? Like, I know we're supposed to pray and we're supposed to talk to him. And I know that there are stories in the Bible about God speaking to people, but truthfully, I've never heard him speak or, or say anything to me. Does that really happen? And if I'm honest, I have my doubts. I mean, God, right, speaking to me, does that really happen? How does that work? It's a great question. Great question and very, very understandable because we aren't walking around hearing uh, voices all the time, are we? Well, I mean, maybe some of us are, but that's like a different issue. Does God really speak? That's the question and it is a great one. Uh, how do we line that question up with the fact that one of the core beliefs of Christianity is that he does speak, that God's active. He's available. He wants to speak to you. He's trying to get your attention. He's doing things in our lives. He's speaking. He's allowing things to happen to draw you and me closer to him. So let's talk about this. And let's talk about this by looking at one of the strangest stories in the Bible. It's found in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. And the book of Numbers is the story of Moses and the Israelites when they were wandering around in the desert for, for like 40 years after they left Egypt and the Red Sea and all that, and before they entered the promised land, the land of Canaan, they're wandering around in the desert. That's what the book of Numbers is about. And this story is about a guy named Balaam. Now, Balaam was a pagan prophet. He practiced divination where, where he tried to communicate with all kinds of spirits and he, he practiced other magical arts and the Israelites were wandering through the desert and they ended up coming to town, to his town, trying to come through a place called Moab. Now, the king of Moab, King Balak, was afraid. And he saw the Israelites approaching, he was, he was afraid. And there were a lot of them. He didn't know what they were gonna do. He didn't know what they were about. He didn't trust them to come through his town. He wanted them gone or destroyed. And so he sends for Balaam to help attack the Israelites by, by cursing them. He wants them to come and he wants him to come and curse them. He wanted Balaam to put a curse on the people of Israel, which is really fascinating in and of itself. Last week in this series, we talked about how there's a spiritual battle going on all around us, that God's angel army was ready to go to war with the prophet Elisha. We talked about that last week. And in this story, we also get hints of the fact that the battle coming against the people of God, the Israelites, it wasn't only physical, that there was a uh, recognition that there was a spiritual dimension to all of this. And so this pagan prophet, Balaam, is asked to put a curse on the Israelites. But the Lord spoke to Balaam. Again, remember, here's a, here's a pagan prophet, but God spoke to him and told him to refuse to go to King Balak and do what he wanted Balaam to do. And so uh, Balaam pushed a little bit back on that. And, and God finally said, okay, you can go, but the only thing I want you to do is to speak my words. You can't do anything else. Just speak the words that I give you to say. And so, so Balaam saddles up his donkey and he goes along with the leaders that Balak had sent to him to bring him there. He goes back to, back to King Balak, but, but God knew Balaam's heart. 
And he knew that Balaam was not trustworthy, that he was rebellious, that he was not committed to following him. And so he sent an angel with a drawn sword to stand in Balaam's way. And now what we find out is that Balaam, he couldn't see the angel, but his donkey could, which is wild. Like the donkey tries to stop several times. She goes off the path. She, she at one point crushes Balaam's foot <coughs> against a wall. She finally just lies down on the path, won't go forward. It's kind of like my dog Molly when she's done with a walk. Even if it's in the middle of the, of the road, she decides she's done. She lies down. Balaam's donkey sees the angel ahead and just stops. So Balaam gets angry. He takes his, his staff out and he beats the donkey three separate times, beats, beats that animal. And, and then it even gets weirder, really weird, because the donkey and Balaam start talking to each other. Here's, here's where we pick up the story. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it said to Balaam, what have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Just recognize for a minute that the donkey is actually speaking. I can't imagine what it would be like if my dog Molly started talking to me. I mean, like I always imagine what she's thinking when she sits there with her big brown eyes and stares at me. But if she began to speak, I would probably run uh, out of the house screaming. Balaam just decides to talk back to his donkey. Balaam answered the donkey, you have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? The, the donkey, get this, is having a rational conversation with her master right here. She's using logic. <laughs> Wrap your brain around that. No, he said. Uh, then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. And so he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared your donkey. I would have spared it. So Balaam's donkey spoke to him like actual words. And the question is really how? Did, did God give human powers to a donkey? I think maybe it's more likely that he opened her mouth and spoke through her. The donkey asks him some questions. And, and then if you notice, once Balaam's eyes are open and, and he can see the angel of God, the angel of God asks him the exact same questions, which likely means that God, not the donkey, was actually speaking both times. The, the apostle Peter reflects on this story in the book of 2 Peter when he says this about, about uh, Balaam. He says, but Balaam was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. That's from 2 Peter uh, 2, verse 16. And the, the, the funny thing is, Balaam doesn't seem surprised to be talking with his donkey. It's crazy. We don't really know why that was the case, but what we do know is something about Balaam. First, he was in rebellion against the Lord. He was going to King Balak for his own purposes, not on behalf of God, like he promised to him. And second, he was in an irrationally angry state of mind. The, the donkey refuses to go down the path. Uh, he felt like she was mocking him and making a fool out of him for refusing. And so he beats her three times. And perhaps as, as happens in the middle of a wave of anger, he lost his ability to think clearly. That happens to us too sometimes. And it took the angel opening Balaam's eyes to see what was really going on, what was really happening. And he stopped with the anger and he began to listen to the angel. And finally, Balaam repents. Now, the point here, it's not really about animals. It's not about animals talking or even about animal uh, cruelty, although that's terrible. It's about how God speaks. Let's just say this. When it comes to God speaking, if he really is God, if he really is all powerful, he's really sovereign, he's in control, then he can do whatever he wants to do, right? He can speak however he chooses to speak. 
But there are some patterns in life to pay attention to. There, there are ways that he has chosen to speak in, in my life and in the life of a lot of Christ followers that, that, that are important to remember and recognize. There are some ways that, that God speaks. How does God speak? There, there are a lot of ways, I, but I want to talk to you about four of the main ways that God seems to speak to us. First is this, God speaks through his word. And, and, and this is really good news, really good news. You want God to speak in your life? If you're asking for God's wisdom, you already have it. You already have it. It's in the scriptures. He inspired the biblical authors to record the history and the stories of the people of God and to record the words of God and, and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, his son. And if you're looking for direction and you're not reading his word, it's like if I were, uh, like if I were trying to drive from here to my nephew's new house in Seattle and I wasn't using a map. I, I could drive, but I would never arrive. God spoke to the prophet Isaiah about his own words when, and, and he said it like this. Here's how he describes his own words. He says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. His word's always going to achieve the purpose for which it is sent. <clears throat> a question for you. Are you regularly listening to God through his word? Second way that he speaks is this. God speaks through other people. He speaks through other people. In, in addition to God speaking through his, his word that he's given us, he often chooses to speak through other people around us. In, in my life, uh, God used a man named Eddie Thomas to open his mouth and share about the resurrection of Jesus and the salvation that I could have through trusting in him. That was when I was 12 years old at a soccer camp in Oxford, North Carolina. And that experience shaped my life forever. And he's used countless other people along the way in my life. People I've been in uh, small group Bible studies with, friends who have spoken the truth to me to encourage me. People who have said hard things to me that have challenged me in my relationship with God. And, and yes, even pastors who have spoken God's word and truth in ways that inspire and pull me forward. He's used people. I know that he's done that in your life too. He's used many of you to speak into my own life. And, and he's using people, maybe your friends, maybe your, your kids at times, maybe uh, your spouse to speak his word and his will into your life. So when you're with people, be open and ask the Holy Spirit, is this something from you, God, that I need to pay attention to? Is what I'm sensing something from you? So here's a question for you to ask with that. Are you open to the input of people around you? Uh, a third way that God speaks is he speaks through the Holy Spirit. God speaks through the Holy Spirit, Jesus said it like this. He was describing this one day. He said, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. A, a, a few quick words on the Holy Spirit. We could talk a long time. He's an equal part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, all co-equal parts of God him, himself, the one God, and when you surrender to Jesus and offer yourself to him as a response to what he did on the cross for you, that's your invitation. Here's what happens. The Holy Spirit comes into your life to take up residence with you. That's truly an amazing thing. So if you're a Christian, you know Jesus. The, the, the Holy Spirit literally lives in you. And it only makes sense then, doesn't it, that he would want to speak, that he would do what Jesus says, that he'd teach you and me things. He'd remind us of Jesus' words. So don't ignore the impressions that you get on the inside about, about certain things. There have been a lot of moments in my life where the Holy Spirit has, has like prompted me to say something to somebody or, or to ask a particular question or to stop doing something that I was doing or start doing something that I needed to do or go here or, or, or leave there. 
And let me say this as well, a word of caution to share to you. Your feelings aren't always the Holy Spirit telling you to do something. Your, your, your feelings may be leading you in the opposite direction of where you need to go. It's important when you feel like uh, maybe that's the Holy Spirit nudging me. It's important to compare what you think he's saying to what God's word says. It's important to do that. If it lines up, then that's great. If it doesn't, that's very, very important to notice. And it's also important to share what you're feeling with trusted friends who can, who can pray with you, who can give you their advice, give you their feedback. God speaks through the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I want to share one more way that he speaks. The fourth way is this. God speaks through events. He speaks through circumstances that happen in our lives. God allows certain events and circumstances to happen in our lives, to direct us, to change us, to help us to grow spiritually. The uh, uh, James in the New Testament writes it like this. He says it like this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. That's what James says about trials and circumstances in our lives. I can tell you about a ton of events in my life that God has used to speak to me. The, the, the family I grew up in, going to the college that I went to, the, the birth of each of my kids, losing a spouse to cancer, planning a church, and so many other smaller things. God uses circumstances to call us back to him, to lead us ahead, to give us his vision for our future with him. So let me ask you this question. What's God saying to you through your circumstances right now? What's he, what's he saying to you through your circumstances? So those are four ways that he, that he speaks. He can speak audibly to you if he wants to, or he can write a message in the sky or speak to you through your cat. I mean, sure, like he's God. It's just that those things in, in my experience are exceedingly rare because he's given us those other four ways already. Now, the reality is this. God can use anyone to do his will and speak his truth. He can use anyone to do his will and speak his truth. Balaam was kind of like shook by all that, God had just spoken to him through a donkey. And so he went to King Balak after all of that strangeness and his repentance. And he said this, well, I've come to you now, Balaam replied, but I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. God can use anyone, even a donkey and a rebellious prophet to do his will and to speak his truth. We just have to position ourselves to listen. Now, now, one final question for you. Are you getting yourself in a position to listen to him? Because God can use anybody, a donkey, a pagan prophet. And if he can do that, if he can use anybody like that, then imagine, just imagine how he can use you and me. Let's pray. God, help us to listen. We acknowledge you, God, today that, that even if it doesn't seem like it sometimes that you want to speak in our lives, and that's not often with audible words, but it's through people, it's through your word, it's through the Holy Spirit, it's through events that happen in our lives. And, and you can choose to speak however you want to. Right now, God, would you just make us uh, great listeners? Would you help us to slow down when we need to slow down? Would you help us to, to stop and to pause and to build times into our day of, of opportunities where we're listening to you? And would you, by your Holy Spirit, prompt us and nudge us and soften our hearts and help us to hear your word clearly? We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. dry drink of the water come and thirst no more and come all you sinners come find his mercy come to the table he will say
satisfy Taste of His goodness And find what you're looking for For God so loved The world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in Him Will live forever your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross, Jesus is waiting there, with open arms, see His open arms, for God so loved the world that He gave us, it's one and only Son to save us, whoever believes. In him, will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so love. God so love the world. Here at Love Lake Norman, we believe that everyone has a next step to take. And I wanted to offer a few that you may be interested in. The first is by going to our website, lovelkn.org. There you can find information about who we are as a church, ways to get connected, and you can find our connection card. Now, when you fill that out, it not only allows us to know that you are here today, but it allows us to get to know you a little bit better. The second next step is by taking a step into giving. We view generosity as a lifestyle, as an act of worship, and as a response to God's goodness. We never want giving to be done out of shame or guilt, but always motivated by joy. You can go to lovelkn.org slash give to learn more about that, or you can text the dollar amount to 84321. And last but not least, a next step for you is maybe to come to an in-person worship experience on a Sunday morning. We meet every Sunday morning at the Oak Street Mill at 9 and 1030, and we would love to see you there. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope to see you back next week.